Welcome to another video from David Spoon Media. I'm David Spoon. If you like these videos, please hit subscribe on the YouTube channel. That makes all the world turn gold. Plus, it will give you brownies and free soda for life. It's kind of a cool thing. Um, I just want to make sure people know what's going on. There's a move in the world to try and change the definition in the church for what love is. The world is trying to say, well, you don't love us if you don't accept everything that we say, do, and are, and Jesus commanded you to love us. The problem with that is that the world, once again, twists, pollutes, and poisons the things that Jesus tries to teach because the world does that from a uh, fleshly point of view. So the four major words for love in the scriptural realm of the neuros, which has to do with the sexual love, never used in the New Testament, by the way. Storge, which is a family affection love, a love that uh, talks about love of family one to another. Philea, which also has to do with a brotherly love, the brotherly love, Philadelphia, city of brotherly love. And the idea is to have a genuine and deep-hearted concern. Jesus only used that word twice, once with Lazarus and once with the disciple he deeply loved. So it's a very deep and committed love. And then finally, agape, which is the main word that is used in the New Testament regarding love. It's super important to understand what agape is and isn't. I'm going to read you something from William Barclay, who was a noted scholar. He said this, and this is a great thing to keep in mind. Agape has to do with the mind. It is not simply an emotion which rises unbidden in our hearts. It is the principle by which we deliberately live. It is a kind of love that we must have for all our enemies as well. The Christian must always love agape for the best interests of the human being. For the best interests of the human being. And so when you see agape, you understand God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. The action of giving, sacrificial giving, was part of that love. And the key component here is to understand that when the world says, well, you must accept us as we are, because that's what Jesus said when he said, love one another. That is not what Jesus said. When Jesus said to love one another, he was talking about looking out the best interests for one another within the framework of being obedient to God. And that it was a conscious decision and action to do so, something that must be done through the empowerment of God. I challenge you to love your enemy apart from God. You can barely love yourself, let alone your enemy. So the call in understanding that is to grasp that when the woman was caught in adultery, in the act of adultery in John chapter 8, Jesus didn't say, I forgive you, go back and sin some more, because gee, isn't that fun? Jesus said, go and sin no more. In other words, he accepted her, forgave her, but then told her to change. And when Jesus taught, he said, repent. And if you look in the entire Sermon on the Mount, you'll see he calls for change of behavior. He doesn't just accept people where they're at if they're in a sinful life. He requires them to alter or to change what they're doing and go into the direction of God. When a Christian is required to love in that capacity, we're doing it for the best of the person. So when you tell a person you can't do that behavior because it's contrary to God, that is an act of Christian agape, of love. The problem is Christians do it in a poor manner, with little uh, expression of care, and with even less, you know, desire for the person to really do well. It's just a Bible bullet. We can't do that. you got to have it straightforward from the heart of God, trying to reach the person, but telling them, hey, this behavior is not cool. It's not okay. As a father, if my child continually put his hand on a hot oven, I would continually discipline him and redirect him so that he would not hurt himself looking out in the best interest for him. Trying to save somebody from living a life of sin that will send them to hell is, in fact, agape love. That's what we need to be operating in. Thanks.